Hello, 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 everybody. I am Mr. Stray. I'm State Club. And this is Gamer Melt, a retro gaming podcast where we play games that are 15 years or older. Every week, we spin a wheel. That wheel picks a console. Then we spin for that console, and that that wheel picks a game. So, yeah, enough about that. You already, yeah. Okay, if you guys have listened to the other episode, or if this is the first episode you're listening to, I just want to say I'm sorry for what you're going to have to listen to in today's episode. But how are you doing, Stick Bob? I'm doing good. How are you doing? <gasps> this is the first time you've asked. And it'll be the last. Oh, okay. Well, I better cherish this moment. Uh, I am doing terrific. <laughs> off topic here. All right. Just a little bit off topic. What is... <laughs> so I just saw this... Okay, this thing that happened uh, somewhere... Uh, I'm not sure where it was, but there is this, um, you've seen giant squids, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a, a, a boat got attacked by a giant squid, and the boat is now gone because the squid dragged it into the ocean. <laughs> and I think that um, is... Titanic wheel tank. The, that's why I, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to swim. I'm not swimming in the ocean. Uh-uh. You would rather not be drowned by a giant squid. No, uh, no. Nah. Imagine you just swimming and then the giant squid just grabs you. Also, what I cannot think of is what even is the difference between a squid and an octopus? One of them has um four, one of them has just eight legs, but the other has four legs, four arms, I think. Wait, wait, that that explains the octo. It's eight. Yeah, the squid's probably the one with the arms. How many legs does a, a squid has six legs? Okay. So it's just a Squids have six legs and octopus. Okay, so octopuses have eight legs. Squids have six. So they're in the same family. They're just one is a little different. Yeah. So basically, they're like an octopus and a squid are the same family, right? I would guess so. They like they're they're carnivores. They're carnivores. Squids are carnivores. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Oh, and they both eject ink. Yeah. So you could say they're identical. Oh. Kind of like the twins in this game that we played, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, the Tipton Caper. I cannot believe you just said that, you I came up with it on my own. Now, The the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Tipton Caper is a video game for the Game Boy Advance developed by Behavior Interactive, known for... Uh, known as Artificial Mind and Movement. Uh, it was released October 24th of 2006. It's old. It's old. Hey, it's a year older than you know, it's a year younger than me. What do you mean it's old? It's 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 gonna be like seventeen years old pretty uh in October, so it'll also make you old. Well, I'm not old. Uh this was a game released on the Game Boy Advance only. You could you would if you wanted to play Zack and Cody, the Tipton Caper, you had to get a Game Boy uh Advance or SP. Or a DS. If you had a DS, then you could play this game. Because uh, backwards compatible, the original DS. Uh, and the DS Lite, I think. I think the DS Lite is backwards compatible with Game Boy Advance. So yeah, uh, if you solely just want to play this game, then you would have to get that. And I bet there was a ton of people when this game was coming out that they wanted to buy this game. I, I wasn't one of them because I was only one years old, so I wasn't on the hype for this. Now, if you old, would you? Uh, yeah, I... I definitely would have been on the hype for this game. I would have pre-ordered and everything. I would have paid extra off of somebody trying to rip you off on eBay. Just to get this game. Yes, just to get this game. Let's uh, let's tell them why you should get this game. Uh, so you are a... You can play as Zack or Cody. Uh, the controls are pretty simple. You press your... You press right trigger to turn into Zack or Cody. Uh, and basically, what has happened to start off the story is a lamp... Uh, no, not a lamp. A, v- a vase was tipped over and it broke. And of course, it was blamed, like always in the show, on Zack and Cody uh, because they're troublemakers. Uh, and, you know, they're they're in New York living in this nice... I, I think it's New York. It's been a while since I've seen the show, but they live in this hotel uh, that has a bunch of people always coming in and out of it. It's weird to live in a hotel, though. 
Yeah, basically, it's tipped over. Zach and Cody didn't do it, so you need to figure out who did it. They're trying to prove their innocence, and they also want four o'clock ice cream. So I believe it's also by the pool. Yeah, that four that ice cream is no joke. So Zach is in the red coat. That's who you play as at first. You play as Zach. I believe he's red, and Cody is blue. And when you play a Zach, Zach is basically the strong one. He can push things. He can carry stuff. He can climb. And Cody, uh, Cody's kind of useless at the beginning. So what you're saying is Cody's weak and useless. No, yeah, that's basically what it is in the show. Cody's pretty useless. He's just a little smart. Just a little. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> They're not the smartest kids, but Cody's definitely smarter than Zach. Zach is a, more of a troublemaker than Cody is. You've never seen the show, huh? No, no, I have not. I've seen the show all the way. This is based off of the show, and uh, yeah, the, the show's pretty good. It go, it went on for three seasons. They made a second show called Sweet Life of Zack and Cody on Deck, where it takes place on a boat instead. Who would have guessed? Yeah, it's a yeah, Sweet Life on Deck, and then there's also the uh, Sweet Life movie made in 2011, which I have yet to see. So. You play as uh, Zach, and you find your way in the... There's s- five chapters in this game? Five episodes. They go by episodes for some reason. Probably because it's the show. And I do not believe that this is an actual episode inside of the show. I think this was made up for the game. Um, most likely. Yeah, most likely. And it's, it's a genius concept, honestly. You start off as Zag, you're moving things around, you're going around, uh, you trying to collect room keys. There's like purple, orange, and green, uh, and you can unlock uh, doors with those and get into other rooms. You collect pictures, which are just for an album, which is just, it, it doesn't mean anything. If you want 100% the game, then collect those, but you don't have to. Uh, the, there's not really, oh wait, no, there is enemies in this game. Yeah. There is dogs, which if they see you, they will bark at you, and you have to restart uh, at the last checkpoint. Uh, there's people, like regular people, inside the rooms while Zach and Cody are breaking into their rooms <laughs> to get to the next. Uh, and if they find you, then you're out. Uh, there is the empl- the Tipton employees, who if they find you, uh, you will have to restart and uh later on there's more enemies but we'll talk about that later uh the dogs are annoying aren't they yeah i hate the dogs i rage quit over the dogs i think they are stupid i Uh, nearly rage quit i rage quit like a couple times playing this game so once you finally beat the first level uh you're into the basement you're going into the basement uh and you need to find a vacuum once you do find that vacuum, Cody finally becomes useful. He uh, gets to vacuum up things. He, he can use his vacuum to vacuum up uh, pots or vases around the area. And you can use those to throw at enemies. You can use it to throw at buttons that are like across the floor that you can't reach because there's like rebarb on the floor. That, so it doesn't allow you to reach. Um you can do that uh you can i think that's all you can do with the the vacuum is just grab vases and throw them now what i did hate is when you grab a vase cody cannot turn into different directions you have to grab it in the direction that you're gonna throw it yeah that's so annoying It, it really was annoying i i do not know if they thought about that they probably did because how would they not they were like hey let's just make it to work you actually cannot turn for some reason. So yeah, that is quite annoying. Uh, Cody, uh, no, not Cody, uh, Zach. Now Zach gets a cool item, water balloons, which I think I used a lot more than I did with uh, Cody's um, vacuum. Same here. Yeah, see, it's, his, his water balloons were pretty good. Um, he could throw them pretty far. You can use it to uh, like direct somebody's attention to somewhere else. Like you could throw it behind a dog, and the dog will look in that direction. Or you could throw it at a person just to make noise, and they will look in that direction. You can sneak past them. So it's a lot more useful. So do you like Zach or Cody more? Zach. Yeah, yep, Zach. Zach is so much better than Cody. 
Even the show, Zack is better than Cody. Yeah. Yeah. Zack is so much better, and you hardly end up using Cody. When, okay, so once you t- once you climb stuff, you leave Cody behind. Now, let me ask it's you something. Cody's weak. Yeah, Cody weak. Uh, Cody can't climb. So you climb into vents. Now, did you know when you turn in, when you when you climb something and Cody is left at the bottom, did you know if you pressed R, you can turn into Cody and walk around? Yeah, I I I like um first to see what happened. I was like, what? I didn't find that out until chapter three because I looked up a video of how to get past a certain part, and somebody did that. I no shame here. I did that as well because I think chapter no episode two annoying part. You got a pool of ace with Cody, but it's off screen. Oh, so, yeah, so you couldn't see it. In in chapter three, I I was stuck at, in the hotel where you would you would climb a book you would climb a um you climb a shelf as mm-hmm. Zach and Cody would be left and then you would climb down on the other side and there was a dog you would get past the dog there was a human you'd get past the human and then you come to this room with two humans and there's bubble wrap I believe on the floor I believe it was bubble wrap. If you step on it, the humans hear you, and then you're you're done. Uh, and there was two boxes that you had to move out of the way. Well, after that, I couldn't figure out what to do because you can't press the you can't walk over it. And I looked up how to beat it. Somebody turned into Cody, and I paused and I was like, "Okay, I had no idea you could do that. The game didn't tell you you could." let me do this i know how to do it now so i turned into cody i used a, a vase to hit the button and we were good uh, i did find that annoying uh, that they didn't tell me that and uh yeah so that's where i got stuck was on chapter three i i rage quit a lot on chapter chapter two i think chapter two was probably the hardest how so because i kept on rage quitting on there because i kept i, I just it was <laughs> it, this game is a top down we forgot to say that it's a top down which I didn't expect. I kind of thought it was going to be like a platformer somehow. Uh-huh. But this game is a puzzle game. It's a top-down puzzle. Maze. Maze puzzle. Oh, crud. There, did you get on chapter uh, episode three? Did you get to episode three? Nearly. Yeah, I kept getting lost. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, I got lost. That's why I rage quit, because I was getting lost so many times in chapter two. Uh, episode chap- two, there's so many level one doors. I really hate. I really hate it. Episode three, I beat episode three, and that's the farthest I got. So I only went one episode ahead of you. There, so I had two episodes left, and I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to play it <laughs> today, uh, to beat it. One of the funnest levels is in episode three. You get on a on a uh, you know those hotel carts that you push around. Oh yeah. You get on one of those and you use Cody's vacuum as a like as a boost as like a thruster or something. Yeah, like a thruster. You use that as uh, your power and you uh, you dart down the hallway and it's like a it's super long hallway, but you're trying to dodge luggage and stuff. And That's sick. yeah, it, it's it's an entire like racing level. You're trying to get to the end, and you're you're dodging uh you're dodging suitcases and holes in the floor and everything, and it's actually really that's I I was so sad after that part was done because it was so fun. Uh, did you see the culprits of who uh actually broke the vase? I don't believe so. So it's these little flying robots. Oh yeah, no no. Okay yeah, you won it because at the end of the racing level is when you find out. So you you're chasing what you're doing in the racing level is you're chasing this little flying robot that has like propellers that shows up in the beginning of the game for a split second. Like they say, oh, what is that robot thing doing? And then and then it shows and back it up. The hmm? And then it knocks over the vase. Yeah, that's what knocked over the vase. Um, But they chase it and then Cody suction cups it and you get stuck in this level. You can't go anywhere with this thing uh, suction cup to you. So the only choice you have is to let go of it, and it breaks. And then Zach gets mad at Cody for breaking the robot. So it's oh, like Cody, yeah, you had no choice. It wasn't Cody's fault. 
So after that, you find uh, the janitor and the janitor who, who told you about the vacuum. Mm -hmm. Well, he tells you that he already had an extra vacuum anyways after he sees Cody has it, uh, is uh, using it. Yeah, do you mean like made us get that for no reason so yeah he's you. like oh you have you're gonna use it uh you used it to so he was covered by robots a b bunch of those flying robots and they attack you and also giant robots giant purple square robots that you had to hit with vases three times to kill them and they would l they would literally like if they saw you they would dart after you and hit the nearest like wall so he, after you get rid of those and then you make it to him, he's like, oh, the robots trapped me in here and everything. I have a spare vacuum anyway, so let's do this. You get out and this is where you get to play as a different character. So you got to play as, um, oh, I forgot the girl's name. I think it was in Zack and Cody, there is a worker. She, she works at the front desk. Mm -hmm. She's from High School Musical, if you've ever seen that. Like Gabriella. Uh, her name, her name is Sharpay, and uh, oh, Sharpay. Yeah. The, okay. So you have seen uh, High School Musical? Yeah, all three. Yeah, the, I I think all three of them are good. <laughs> oh, wait till we get to play High School Musical game. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> wait, when was High School Musical made though? I have no idea. Perfect. Two thousand six. I don't know it's actual. And there is a game. Oh no. For the DS. Oh no. Okay. This uh, is the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not like the GameCube. Okay, so Maddie, that's her name. So you play as Maddie, who is a worker uh, at the front desk, and she helps. So you have to make it to her room. She grabs a coat. She put she, Zach and Cody uh, sits on like, I think, uh, I don't know if it was Zach sitting on top of Cody or probably Cody sitting on top of Zach. It uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> um yeah, but exactly. one sits on call. one sits on the other shoulders and you, she puts the coat and the hat on them so now they're one tall person i think and this might have been two. i think this might have been chapter four actually i think i played a tiny bit of chapter four i'm not completely sure uh i kind of lost track but you are walking through the middle of the hotel trying not to get caught and there's people everywhere if you bump into them or they bump into you you're uh you fall down and you have to balance yourself by clicking r or l to keep uh this little needle in uh in the middle of this uh bar it goes green yellow and red you want to keep it on green and it is really hard you have to especially on playing it on our phone like my phone playing on my phone not on like a game boy it is very hard to click the r and l button to stay set steady and walk at the same time it was pretty difficult, but I found that was one of the funnest parts. It was doing a... that classic trick. <laughs> yeah. What did you find interesting while playing Zach and Cody through the level, through the episodes? What What was interesting? What stood out? Oh, useless Cody. <laughs> Poor Cody. Cody's been violated. Cody just Cody's just having a hard time. I think he's the least favorite brother. Uh, actually, no. What? He's the favorite because he's a good boy. Oh, of course he hits the weak ones. The, the yeah. weak ones. Zach is the yeah. troublemaker and the mom. So it's it's a it's a single mom taking care of her uh, two boys inside of this hotel, and she's a singer. Uh, she sings at, in the hotel lobby. So that okay. Now I'm reminded of why they actually live in the hotel, and that's because the mom works downstairs in the hotel singing. So she gets to live inside the hotel. She gets a room inside as part of the agreement. Okay, so now that makes sense. <laughs> I forgot about that. So uh, there is no wiki page for this game, which no. means it wasn't popular. Now we could talk about the music. I actually quite like it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I turned off the music and listened to my own music. To me... Maybe it's because I turned it off after like a minute of hearing it. Maybe it gets better, but it sounded garbage. It it was making my ears bleed. Cody worked for ages trying to perfect that music. No wonder Cody made it. <laughs> it will it change your mind if I say Zach made it. Oh wow, the music will actually sounded pretty good. I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, now you think Cody made. 
Zach made it. No, it, I I didn't like it. Maybe it got better, so I'm not gonna go back and see if it got better. <laughs> I did see on a comment though. Maybe you're right, cause when I went to go look up, somebody said the basement level music is so good. It's my favorite, and I was like, really, the music? But I didn't go and when I went to the basement, I didn't turn on my sound. <laughs> no, you didn't fact check them. No, I didn't fact check. <laughs> maybe Zach made the basement music, and that's why it's good. Yeah, maybe you just biased. <laughs> yeah. What's that could be? Um. I don't, I can't really say about like audio. I don't, there's no voice acting in this game. There is voice lines, but no acting. Like there's like the uh, little bu speech bubbles pop up and the character's faces pop up. I want to talk about this. It is stupid. <laughs> they literally take pictures from the show and they put it on the screen and then have a speech bubble coming out of the person's mouth. And that's how they talk. It's just a... A still frame of the person, very pixelized, and they talk. And I thought it was very, very dumb and very low budget. Obviously, this is a Disney game off of a Disney show. So, of course, it's going to be low budget. Now, the animations. What do you think of the animations for this game? Well, it, like a 3D flat down game, like 2.5D game. I think it was... I don't, think, I don't think this is a 2.5D. I think it's just a 2D. What what makes you think it's like a two point five D? I have broken stick, Bob. No, I no, I do think I know where you're coming from. Like, um, I think they're trying to trick you with it to make it kind of look like two point five D. Uh, but I think it really is just two D. It's not. It's if you think about um, if you think about you're 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 coming from um, uh, Pokemon right now. Where when we played Pokemon Diamond. Yeah. Uh, how, uh, it, but that was actual 3D, uh, in it where like things had more detail. I don't think, I guess in some parts, I think for certain things, it, it, it could be 2.5D, but I think mostly it's a top down 2D game. Oh no, now, now I'm in between. We need like a, we need like a half of two. <laughs> we need, <laughs> we need half of that 2.25D. This is 2.25D game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see where you're coming from, but like it does look 3D though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. For certain things, it does look 3D. Yeah, I'm, I have pictures of it here right now. I, it's us, using, using like certain colors and stuff. I do see how it kind of looks like that. I look at two pictures here. These aren't even pictures that I took. These are just online. One picture is the level I was talking about, about them, the Zack and Cody standing on each other and you have to balance them. And oh, the, yeah, I see that one. Oh, <laughs> the other one is is the racing level that I was talking about. I see that as well. <laughs> <laughs> the two best levels right there. Now, Bro, I thought you hated that one. <laughs> you thought you kind of hated the level one. I, I did kind of hate it, but I thought it was probably one of the best parts in the game because it was actually difficult but fun. That actually had some some like skill to it. Yeah, it had skill to it. Even though eventually I did figure out how to cheese it. So what I would do is you got lazy. No, I didn't get lazy. I just cheesed it. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. So if once it gets to one side, like you let it drop to one side and then you click it and don't let it go to the green. Just keep it in the yellow and let it fall. Click, let it fall. Click, let it fall. Click. So you only have to click one side. You don't have to click them both to keep them in the middle. So you can keep on walking and just every like half a second you you tap the uh, the trigger. And that made it a lot easier. That that was my cheese. Uh, you speedrunners probably, you know, if people speed this, run this game, they already know this tactic probably. But the animations, walking animations, um, you know, it's just classic. Uh, I think the like throwing stuff and all that uh moving pots is probably where the animation is the best like when cody cody actually does something uh and when he moves the pots they get animation right there um for using his device but really the animations are just basic there's nothing like extraordinary happening i will say it doesn't lag like in the racing level it doesn't lag like it did in our last game that we played which was uh charlotte's web uh, so thank goodness for that. <laughs> I didn't get any lag in that game. <laughs> How dare. 
I was blessed. The graphics hold up to now? Uh, this was in 2006. Spider-Man was made in 2007, the game that we played. That's also weird. Now, like, I'm not trying to compare this to other games, like, um, like, like not like PlayStation games or what the Wii was. Or, wait, did the Wii release in 2006? It might have. It's got like 2007 games, so probably. 2006, November 19th. So the uh the Wii was a month after its release date. This was a month after this game came out a month after the Wii's release date. I'm not trying to compare it to Wii games, obviously. I'm trying to compare it to other uh pixel games of that time, like other games that were like this. But did you, there was already games like um what? There was Star Wars on the Game Boy Advance, Lego Star Wars, and that game looks incredible. Like if you look that up, Lego Star Wars on the Game Boy Advance, it looks crazy of how how good it looks. It looks 3D. Ooh, it actually does. And there's actually a full 3D game on the Game Boy Advance. Like it's like a actual uh I can't think of the name. Oh, what is it? Oh man. It's bugging me that I can't think of it. But it's a it's a 3D game. Oh crud. Why can I not think of it? It starts with an A and it's about t it's it's like a skinny guy and a big guy, but I can't think of the name of it. Uh, he wears like a helmet with wings. If anybody knows, can you please email email us or something? Okay, Stickbob found the game. It's Asterix and Oblix. I don't know how to say Oblix. Uh, it's on the Game Boy Advance. It's a full 3D game. If you if you look at it, Stickbob. Now, have you played it before? You you knew what I was talking about somehow. I was trying to think of characters that had a winged hat. I thought of Asterix. You, how do you know who Asterix is? One, there was an Asterix book at my school. Two, I had to watch an Asterix movie. There's a movie? Yeah, there's a movie. I had to, I had to watch it in French. Wait, in is French it Asterix, audio. the secret of the magic potion? I have no idea. It was, it was a 6.7 out of 10. It was in 2018. Well, this game looks insane for being on the Game Boy Advance. Are we even talking about Sweet Life and Zack and Cody anymore? Uh, yeah, no, we gotta go. Okay, we gotta go back. <laughs> I was just, like, saying, comparing it to, uh, to that game, which was, that game was 2003, I think. I do not think the graphics hold up. You're an iffy. No way that you will ever think these graphics hold up. Come on, Stick Bob. I never had a single problem with them. Okay, you don't have to have a problem with it, but do they hold up for their time? For the time, yeah. Probably. I'm gonna kill you. Now I know where you're gonna be when we ask if this game was good. Favorite part of the game? Favorite part? Hmm. Definitely not walking around or using Cody. Just a quick little Poor jab Cody. at Cody. <laughs> Poor Cody. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes him. Um, probably just like the whole like puzzle aspect of it. Now you gotta do like go to this place, do this, which will open that door. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think they kind of reuse that over and over. The whole entire thing is pushing buttons. That's yeah. every puzzle is pushing buttons, and find your way around the maze of doors. I I would like to talk to the person that built this hotel. My okay, so your favorite part is the puzzle aspect and everything. There's not really much to find at the favorite part. I don't have to say my favorite part is when they actually go out of their comfort zone of the regular Zack and Cody game, like when they do the walking thing where you're walking as Zack and Cody on top of each other, or you're doing the race. I think that was pretty fun. I think when they get out of their comfort zone with the classic thing i think it becomes actually a fun game and they should have just done a zach and cody racing game right. <laughs> that would have been insane <laughs> there's not much to find up favorite now least favorite part of this game let's say it on three. One, two, three. the dogs cody what oh yeah cody cody cody, cody. yeah yeah what do you okay <laughs> it was the second least favorite i thought you were on the same thing with me <laughs> <laughs> dogs yeah, yeah no no it's cody yeah of course cody is the least favorite part of this game cody does nothing Hon honestly if this was the sweet life of zach the tipped in caper would have been better game better cody game the freeloader 
This is the part of the game, the, the time where we say, if we give this game our approval for you guys to play, give it our Gamer Milk Badge approval. Big Bob, go ahead. Didn't I go first last time? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you go first this time. Okay, fine. Yes, this game is good. This game is brilliant. I think... That's Cody. Okay, you just reminded me. This game is dumb. This game is stupid. <laughs> this game has Cody. What I, what yeah, more what that, more do I need to say? Cody. Yeah. It's Cody. Cody just <laughs> Cody just outweighs Zach though with his stupidity and weakness. So this game is a definite no. You should not play it. No. You're going to you're going to use your veto, Stick Bob, to make it a good yeah. game. Okay. No. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a veto that we can use every 10 episodes, and they cannot stack. Um, Stick Bob can use a veto if he wants to make this game good, or he can just say that it is a good game, and it's a tie between being bad and a good game. Uh, so, what is it? If Cody didn't exist, I might have vetoed. <laughs> you know, we can do a super garbage, because of Toby, if we both, because <laughs> of C Cody, I called him Toby. <laughs> Because of Cody, if we do both of our vetoes at once to make this game bad, then it becomes super garbage. What happens then? <laughs> what are we doing? It becomes super garbage. <laughs> Meaning That's it. no one on earth will ever play this game again. We grab every copy of this game and burn it. We break into a few houses, but yeah. <laughs> That's the price we have to pay. For Zach, we're, we're going to do this for Zach. Zach deserves better. So, uh, uh, yes or no? Cody kind of ruins it a bit. So it's a no? Yeah, it's a no. It's a okay. no. I, I don't know how you were even the thinking of if it was a good game or not. <laughs> it's not a good game. Zach is the only good part. Cody. Cody just needs to leave. If I ever replay this game, it's just, for, it's just for Zach. I'm never changing into Cody if I ever replay this game. Speaking of, will you replay this game this week? Yes, but Cody, Cody's gonna have to go. <laughs> you, you'll just, <laughs> you'll just code it to uh, get rid of Cody. You'll code Cody out. Yeah, <laughs> code, Cody. I'll code Cody. I will not replay this game. I'm probably not gonna try to beat it, even though I don't have that much left. Uh, people apparently say that level five is really hard, but I'm never gonna find out why. And uh, now, did you replay? charlotte's web last week no i did not i didn't either i have no business to because i beat the game <laughs> now there is some good news this game might not get our gamer badge approval it might be a dumpster fire but there is like at least three more zach and cody games what and who knows we might get it okay wait there's zach and cody games for the ds there's zach and cody Tipped in Trouble, Zack and Cody's Pizza Party, Zack and Cody Circle of Spies. There is a 3D Zack and Cody game, which looks like... So do you know Luigi's Mansion? Yeah. Uh, well, basically, there's a Luigi's... It looks like Luigi's Mansion Zack and Cody game. Cody uses, Cody uses his vacuum again, and Zack has his balloons. It's, the, it's like the same game. <laughs> They have their superpowers back again. But maybe they might have made... It's a 3D game, so maybe Cody is more useful. Maybe he can redeem himself in the next game that we play. Who knows? We might even get a Zack and Cody game. Hold up, but first, before we spin the wheel, is there an audience for this game? If so, it's not for Cody. <laughs> it's only for... For, like, there was, like, I don't know, girls who had crush on Zack playing this game? Yeah. That, that was it. Nothing else. Yeah, no, there, there's really no audience for this game. Never. Uh-uh. Nope. Get out. <laughs> now, we're going to spin a wheel, and the wheel has a bunch of consoles on it. This is going to be our next game. Uh, we've kind of run into some stinky games here, uh, games that aren't good. Our last two times. Yeah, we we played Charlotte's Web and this game. Last time was... um. I think the last good game that we had was Mario. Yeah, probably. <laughs> None of our past game, our three past games, haven't gotten a uh, gamer badge approval. 
we've only approved uh two two games wait okay we've made this is our sixth episode and only two games out of the six have gotten gamer badge approval spider-man three and mario sunshine those are the only games that we've approved so we kind of need a good game here yep so this game has this wheel that we have has game uh consoles on it such as Sega, uh, Game Boy Pants, Game Boy Color, uh, other things, GameCube. Uh, it also has a special thing on it, Ooh. which is our own game that we pick. Uh, we have a special wheel that has uh, 10 games on it. Yeah, five games from you and five games from me that we all that we picked that are 15 years or older. And by the way, uh, we are going to be doing a bonus episode on our 10th episode. Well... Yeah, on our 10th episode, so on our 9th episode, we're going to spin for a mobile game and play it. And it doesn't have to be 15 years or older. So yeah, that's going to be fun. Can't wait for that. Let's spin this wheel to see what we are playing. Why does this keep on happening to us? Oh no, what did we get? <laughs> game Boy Advance. No. This three times in a row! Yeah, I think we need to make, make a rule where we can't get a certain console so many times in a row. Well, I I set the thing to uh to unfair, so it can land on the same thing multiple times. If I set it to fair mode, it wouldn't land on the same thing multiple times. But this just makes it more random. So, okay, okay, we, we got it three times. So we're going to have to spend for Game Boy Advance. Crud. Okay, I as much as I okay, so Game Boy Advance is probably my favorite console on this list, but I kind of wanted to try out something different, you know. Okay. Let's see. Hope we get a good game. Okay, this might be good. What did we get? This is um, this is a game that I have never heard of, but you will know the title. Gotta go fast. Yo, no, no. Two thousand three game for the Game Boy Advance. It is a the second fighting game in the series. The first game being called Sonic the Fighters. This game is Sonic Battle. Ooh. I have never heard of this game. Me neither. But it's Sonic and it gives me hope. So we can finally get a good game. I have high hopes for this. Hopefully don't get disappointed. If you guys want to, you can check us out on YouTube. You may be listening to us on youtube so in the description of wherever you're listening to us you can find every place that we um that we put our podcast on uh gamer milk um you can also find us on twitter uh gamer milk and anywhere basically you can find us in the alleyway we're also called gamer milk <laughs> we just sit in the alleyway and play games uh i'm i'm just so happy that we might ha- be actually playing a good game do you feel happy, Stick Bob? Yes. Until then, I'm Zach. Hey. No. <laughs> what? Come on, I'm do the out- do the outro I'm with me. Do the outro with me. I'm Zach. I'm not associating myself with Cody. Okay, fine. You go first. I'm Zach. And I'm Zach. And this is Gamer Milk. <laughs>